Hey, this is Lorena, and I want to do a Quilter's Life video part, I think, three. I'm going to try to do one every, maybe every other month or every month or every week. I don't know. I don't know. Just based on my energy, my time. I'm working on a client's quilt today. Um, I wanted to share why, why I picked the design I picked so that you could see it. There's several reasons why I made a design, design decision. I know some of you get some quilts and your clients say, do whatever. And you're like, no, <laughs> tell me what to do. So I wanted to share with you some of the decisions that I make when I pick designs and why I pick them. And I thought this would be kind of helpful. I don't know. Some of the reasons why I pick certain designs is because I try to follow the heart. Ignore my stupid dog. The heart of the piecer. There has to be a reason why the piecer decided to pick this beautiful bird with the filigree and of course this quilt block is birdhouses. It's really neat looking. I look at the quilt and what the piecer decided to piece the quilt with. To me it had a lot of this mustard tones even though it's brown but it had a little bit of mustardy tones in it. That's why I chose this thread, and my thread is over there. She had these beautiful little birds with filigree. I went ahead and I picked this design. If you could see as it filigrees, it comes and becomes a bird there. Then another bird becomes visible here, and another one here. I thought I would in introduce it into the whole quilt because this is a birdhouse quilt. So I decided to find myself um, a birdhouse pattern. And that's really, I look at the material, I look at the fabric that she chose. She must have liked it because she purchased it. And she must have really liked it because she used it. So I try to find what the piecer decided to do. Because she could have used any material. She could use the solid, but she chose this beautiful filigree bird. And then I... And, introduce it into the whole quilt and that's kind of how I make some decisions on how I pick designs for my clients. It's time to roll the quilt. So I'm going to remove everything and just go ahead and roll the quilt and get it ready for the next row. Then I'm just like a wedding dress. I also check the back. And as I know that the back doesn't have no pleats, try to make sure that my rows are straight. What I'm doing here is making sure that this row does not hit the other row. So I have the machine on, I think it's called thread break, and I have it go at certain points to make sure that one, the back of the machine doesn't hit the bar, because uh, and then also too, I make sure that the machine doesn't hit this bar, so that the design is inside the space, because I hate unstitching. Once I do that, I also measure where the machine lines are here and the machine lines over there. So here I'm showing you how I check my tension. So I get a light to it. I get this little light. Bought it at Home Depot or Joanne or portable light. It's called Bacon. And I go through the quilt and I look at the tension. And I put the light down and you can see the thread tension right here did have these lights before but they don't work that well anymore that the quilt is longer than the batting by well, like here you can see probably like by three inches okay so I went ahead and I think I showed you that I cut the batting and I also cut myself that one dollar interfacing so I'm just going to lay it in my edge. So 
So here's my dollar interfacing. Face the the gummy side up or down. Sorry, down. Don't listen to me. Down. I think I'm gonna use the thinner ones. I think it'll be better. <coughs> Cut these like two inches. And then iron the interfacing to the body. I thought this would be something cute to share. One of my clients, um, her daughter has the American dolls. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. They're these dolls that you dress up and they're really big, you know, little toy dolls. And my friend decided, I guess the doll has a bed. So she asked me to quilt these. And she's going to trim this off, and it's going to be bedding for her toy dolls. And she made six of them, I believe. Let me see if I can turn it. Six um, blocks, pretty rectangle blocks, so that she could trim them off and make bedding for her granddaughter's American dolls. I just thought that was just the sweetest idea. So I wanted to share this with you. This is underneath my long arm. You know that I put all those shelves on those walls up there and behind me. I decided to buy some more. Oops, let me put the light on. Down under the long arm. And the reason is my dogs like going under the long arm and they like peeing under here which is annoying and I keep steep cleaning the carpet and cleaning it and I just felt like I needed to block them out. My kids started wanting to use some of my shelves to put paper towels and toilet paper in them and so I thought that if I added these down here instead of them using my shelves that I'm using for my quilting that I could put them down here. Like these don't have much in them yet. That's going to be used for my quilting. But I'm going to allow my family. As I turn the light. To use these down here. For like toiletries, paper towels. And cleaning supplies that we purchase. And also it blocks my dogs. From being able to go to the back. Of the machine. And pee back there. <laughs> And I'm still able to, if I needed to, to get to that batting and pull it through to the top. It still gives me the access. And if I needed to, I could put stuff on the shelf. Like right now, I'm going to deliver those quilts that my client gave me. And I'm saving some boxes. But it gives me some good storage space down here. And it wasn't really functional space. Now I have six places to put more fabric quilt that I'm working on and this is what it looks like. Isn't it beautiful? I need to trim it but do you see the little flowers? The little girl. Oh, I'm setting up my old GoPro. I love this GoPro. As a matter of fact, I think this GoPro is better than the newer one. Shh, don't tell nobody. I like the new one because you can connect it to your phone, but I don't know. I think this sometimes does better video quality than the newer one. So if you want to get an old GoPro, they work just as well. You don't need to spend as much money, especially as long as it's uh, 1080. So, I have an added battery pack to it, but this is an old one. I think it's Hero 2. It's that old. Sorry about the glare. I'm going to go ahead and I have it plugged in. Can you see it? I have the thing set here, and I have it kind of plugged in. 